Hi, this is Ryan Tomlinson, also known as Misa Grand Duchess Rasmus Kunin. Um, March uh, 3rd, 2015. January, February, March, April. Correct, at 8.27 a.m. And I'm giving the rest of testament to, nursing, to the nursing board. I can't wait till this is finished. It is so, there is so much to tell. And it is so, ugh, who would want to reminisce on such a uh, terrible experience? The positive, some negative things I've said. I've said niggers of the Army, Nurse Corps, and Medical Corps. By niggers, I do not mean black people. I mean the organization of niggers. I call them niggers because they were abusive, assaultive, and they were very procedural. I don't think that they know what nursing ethics and standards are. And so I refer to U.S. Army Nurse Corps and Medical Corps as niggers, niggerish. A lot of time, black people had to, to had to tolerate being called that all the time, and they did nothing about it. I tolerated assault, abuse, whatever, in the army, working, and nothing was done. So I'm sure when you can understand that these people have no ethics, and they told me so forth that their values were just on papers, and nobody is that idealistic. So their ethics has no standards, and their values, their human values have no standard either. So I call them niggers. If you want to take an offense, that's your business. But I'm not referring to the color of the skin, but to the character of the U.S. Army Nurse Corps, its leaders, and the Medical Corps. Lying, I, I couldn't lie and fudge documents as a, as a nurse. I never did it. I never um, cooperated with it either. Another thing they said, I, I wanted Mr. Miller, I'm going to address this also, that... Um, they said, um, I had some, the, you, you read the, the court-martial documents. The court-martial was enacted after I um, took flight. I could not get any treatment. I was tired every day. I kept on telling them I needed to go home, and I could no longer function in the capacity. And they never let me off. So uh, one day, I packed my stuff up, and I went on a plane. I boarded an airplane to come home to the United States to get treatment, to get help, because I could not get it. HRC offered nothing. Um, Army Nurse Corps headquarters, the leadership was um, aggressive and hostile, and so was the environment. Um, three, Major General Hora did not respond, and no one cared. And I did not hear from my family until the day when they locked me up, when I tried to leave, and so forth. Anyway, getting back to the story, part of the cycle of abuse was um, Mr. Miller. That they never had, I moved from one place to the next place, and I never had a concrete or solid place to live, a stable place to live at the time. When I was living in the Dragony Lodge, Captain Leonard came, told the attendant to tell me to get out of the Dragony Lodge. I was not welcome there. So when I got home from work that day, I said, the leader said, the, your, your, your captain, the, the, the uh, company commander said that you need to get out of the hotel and move out here. And I said, well, where else am I going to go? She said, that's the order. So they packed up my stuff, and I had to go just outside in Korea, scrambling to find something. And that's not, well, that was not the only place they did it. They did it at the, another hotel and so forth. And so you had me moving from place to place in Korea without somewhere to live and being harassed by this Masonic, moronic U.S. Army imbecilic leadership. <sighs> Um, what else can I say? Diane Deal cursed at me. She, I overheard a conversation between her and James Comer where they said that, oh, he's repelled. He's going to need a repay. He should be mentally disabled by the time we're done with him. So when I got into the office, I confronted both of them because I was quietly walking to the office. And she said, oh, you're here. I... You cannot practice nursing. You are physically and mentally disabled. And I said, okay, well, give me my money. Give me the documents and let me go home. That's not the way it works. And she, I said, excuse me, ma'am. Do not shout at me. And I said, from this day forward, I will not speak with you unless there is a legal representative present. And I never spoke to her. And they further harassed me and assaulted me by writing me up, calling me and so forth, showing up at my hotel and sitting down and smiling as if I lacked any of those white or black, dirty U.S. Army Nurse Corps bitches. And forgive me, I am saying this now on testimony. Imagine being a patient 
even at Walter Reed, and never to be able to say that you are raped, assaulted, or abused. They looked at you as if you're funny, as if something derogatory, or if you're a piece of rag. Oh, no, that's not what happened. You're a bit confused. I am quite clear on, on this matter and everything that happened, Mr. Miller. Those disgraceful nurses of the U.S. Army Nurse Corps did not live up to the expectation. Yes, it is sad, and I have a right to be angry. But for, um, fortunate for me, I can channel my anger into positive things. Anyway, um, what else? My personal items were stolen by them and so forth. That, that has nothing to do with um, nursing. Uh, what else can I remember from Young Sang and in Korea? Oh, for somebody that surely had bipolar mania, I was able to immunize a whole, two whole, two whole base flu and uh, N H1N1 virus and also um, and also be the head nurse at two clinics at the time. And at that aspect also, um, working seven days a week, I had to visit, I was instructed to visit patients seven days a week so I had no time, no break. And Tyke Hearson told me that this was the last stop. I told her I needed a break I needed a vacation and she said okay she will inform the leadership that you will get a telephone job well I I went there under hostile circumstances I met the hostility and I survived the hostility um, it was an awful experience I had another TBI um, we talked about TBI I had another TBI on Route 50 out here Captain Jeffrey Laird and some other, um, I think one is an FBI, I know one was a Howard County police officer, hit my car and left me at the side of the road. I, that's another TBI I suffered. And Mr. Miller, another, when I was raped and assaulted, I was hit in the head because they drugged me and I was on the floor. I, was, I woke up on the floor twice. There was no sanity board issue, um, initiated by them. I went to the psychiatrist on my account. They did nothing to help me medically, physically, or emotionally. They did everything to destabilize and uh, make me um, physically or mentally unstable. Mostly physically, because the abuse and so forth and the emotional whatever, whatever, um, assault counts up to verbal and psychological abuse. I despise the U.S. Army, and I'm doing these videos so you can have a history, a documented history. If I had died on that operating table in Korea, you would not have heard this video. You would not have the chance to have my side of the story. The next video I will make is at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, and how seeking safety in order to be safe, to keep my mind and my body safe. I had to extricate myself from their environment and then challenge the things that they did to me. To this day, I have no legal help. The back pay and arrears pay is not paid and so forth. And here I am in limbo, waiting with no one answering calls. That is the status of them, of their hostility and their um, insecurity that, that, that is a fact of me being a whistleblower. I put this question to you, Mr. Miller, and to those who see this video. What if what happened to me happened to you or your loved one or a student that you much admire? This is Ryan Tomlinson signing off. I swear... Everything on this video is a whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Have a good day.